Hi there, I'm Will and I'd like to show you my favourite pieces in this exhibition called Embroidered Birds here at Bucks County Museum. The exhibition's been on for a while now but because of the pandemic very few people have had the opportunity to see it so I hope that by making this short film it will at least give you a taster of what's on display. Now it's going to be a very DIY production, it's just me and the camera, so I'm sorry in advance for any wobbly camera work. Before I show you my favourites, I'll give you a quick whiz round the gallery space, and whilst doing that, I can give you a bit of context to the exhibition. Everything in the exhibition is from the collection of the Embroiderers Guild, and you may or may not know that Bucks County Museum is home to the Embroiderers Guild collection and it comprises several thousand pieces of both historical and contemporary embroidery and it's also international in scope so you'll find everything from Tudor coifs to 21st century abstract artworks, Chinese dragon robes, a Spanish bullfighter's outfit, North American beadwork it's all in there. And this particular exhibition was inspired by a book on embroidered birds written by the former collections manager of the Embroiderers Guild, Dr. Annette Collinge. And it's a beautifully illustrated book, very accessible. And we just felt that it would make the perfect subject for an exhibition here at the County Museum. And when I say we, I mean me and the Embroiderers Guild volunteers that work here behind the scenes with us and they're a fantastic bunch and we really couldn't do it without them. So to my favourites and I have a confession to make I'm not an embroiderer so I don't have the technical expertise to perhaps fully understand all the different processes that have gone into the making of these works. But I don't think it matters because anyone can enjoy the collection. It's for stitchers and non-stitchers alike. And I think that's the beauty of museum collections generally. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, anyone can find a way in. So the first piece that I'd like to show you is on this wall over here. And it's the smallest piece on the wall, but it really caught my eye. It's this piece here, simply called Bird, and it's by Mary McIver, stitched in 1960. And what first caught my eye were the colours. I love the uh, vivid yellow background, and then stitched on top this deep blue felt bird. But then when you get up close and you start to see the detail, it becomes even more interesting. And you can see that Mary has used different materials so you can see real feathers there. And she's created a, a speckled breast using stitches. And I love the way she's cast the shadow on the feet using a fine net. Now I don't know what sort of bird it's supposed to be because in shape it looks a little bit like a robin. But obvi obviously the color is not that of a robin. With a speckled breast, perhaps it's a starling. Or maybe it's no specific type of bird, it's just a generic bird. It doesn't matter. I think what matters to me is the character of the bird shines through its wide-eyed look of curiosity. And they say that the sign of a good portrait artist is one who can draw out the character of their subject, whether it's a person or an animal. And I think Mary has done that here. She's drawn out the character of the bird with its wide-eyed look, which she's achieved very simply, actually, just by using three different sized sequins stitched one on top of the other. So that's my first piece. The next piece I'd like to show you is an example of embroidery as art. And I say that because I think embroidery has often struggled to be taken seriously as an art form. And in the past, it perhaps tended to be um, viewed as a bit of a genteel hobby. But that view was certainly challenged um, by the 20th century, not least by the Embroiderers Guild itself. 
And so what you see is artists coming through, working in stitch and creating artworks to be enjoyed for their own ends. And so the piece I want to show you in this case is at the back and it's called Cockerel and it's by Alison Lilly, made in 1962. And what I like about this piece is the, the almost painterly approach. When you look up close at all the different stitches that Alison is using there, and not just different stitches, but using stitches in, in different ways. So some of them are densely packed together. Others are creating different patterns. She, she's clearly having fun with the stitches. She's experimenting. She's seeing what different effects can be created. And when you come back out and look at it as a whole, it all seems to come together. And what really pulls it together for me are the dark outlines that you can see there, the lines of stitch that are very reminiscent of the swift strokes of a painter's brush or pen. It's a very artistic approach, I think, that Alison has taken. So that appeals to me. The next piece I'd like to show you is not so much embroidery as art, but embroidery as therapy. So the use of embroidery in the rehabilitation of people who have suffered a trauma. And the piece I want to show you is in this case here, and it's this small blue purse. And it's stitched on a cotton sateen, stitched with yellow and green cotton threads in split stitch to depict these two cheerful looking birds happily chatting away to each other. And there are another couple of birds on the back of the purse. Now it might not be the most refined embroidery in the exhibition, but it's an interesting example of the work produced by the disabled soldiers embroidery industry, which was a, a charity set up during the First World War and um, carried on for years afterwards to, uh, to provide employment and recovery for injured servicemen. And they would often work from designs given to them, but the more adventurous would, would create their own designs. And they often made small domestic items like this purse or pin cushions or footstool covers, that kind of thing. But they also worked large scale and they produced pieces for churches and civic buildings. In fact, there's a, an altar frontal in the private chapel at Buckingham Palace made by the uh, disabled soldiers embroidery industry. Okay, the next piece I'd like to show you, um, I'd like you to come traveling with me and we can travel across the Atlantic Ocean and we'll head straight towards Panama in Central America. Now, just before you get to Panama, uh, just off the Atlantic coast there is an archipelago called the San Blas Islands and they are home to the indigenous Kuna people and the Kuna women uh, produce a traditional type of embroidered panel called a mola, M-O-L-A. And in this case here, you can see an example of a traditional mola. They were made to be stitched onto the front and back of the blouses of the Kuna women. And they are reverse applique. So if you think applique is the applying of fabric layers onto a surface. With reverse applique, you're starting with all the layers and you're cutting into them to reveal the colors beneath. So what you have here then are several layers of rectangular cotton fabric cut into um, to uh, produce these wonderful bold shapes. And the edges are then stitched to neaten them up. But I love the bold colors, I love the shapes. And then you can see the surface stitch work there, the uh, lines of stitches um, emanating from the eyes and then crosses below. OK, 
Okay, the next piece I'd like to show you, um, we can continue our travels. So that time we went west, so this time we'll go east and we'll travel to India, where the next piece of embroidery is from. It's a 19th century um, metal thread embroidered panel. Unfortunately, at some time in its life, this panel has been cut in half. And you can't see that here because it's been folded over. Um, but nonetheless, you can still appreciate the embroidery. And you have this wonderful design of peacocks. So the central peacock there with its tail feathers on display. And then either side, a peacock with its tail feathers hidden. And surrounding all this are leaves and flowers all stitched in metal threads and coloured silk threads. Now what really um, appeals to me about this piece is it's also an example of beetle wing embroidery. Now beetle wing embroidery was very popular in the 19th century, quite widespread, so in Europe and America, but particularly in India. And they would use the um, the, the iridescent emerald green wings of, of beetles stitched onto the surface of the fabric to create um, a sparkling jewel-like quality. And I don't know if you can see properly here, perhaps where my um, shadow, finger shad shadow is pointing, that's a beetle wing there. And there's another one there and, and there. Now they were often stitched onto the surface whole, but sometimes the beetle wings would be crushed up into fragments and the fragments stitch to the surface. But it's a, a very uh, effective technique to bring a bit of sparkle to the embroidery. Now the final piece that I'd like to show you um, is from Japan and it's a nice example of less is more. It's this panel here and when I say less is more, actually very little of the surface has been embroidered because it's a silk panel that has been painted to um, portray the sky. And then the actual stitch work is done with the crows and the sun. And so the, the crows are very densely stitched in a deep blue silk uh, thread in satin stitch. And it's just very effective. I, I think what I most like about it is just the feeling I get from looking at it. I find it a very peaceful um, piece of embroidery to look at. Okay, so that's my favourite pieces in this exhibition. I hope you've enjoyed seeing them up close. Um, and I just hope that in the not too distant future, uh, you'll be able to come back to the museum in person, but um, until that time, um, take care and I hope to see you soon. Cheerio.